Hey everyone, welcome to another Goody Reader Roundtable discussion. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to talk about the state of affairs regarding color e-readers, color e-ink, and all that jazz. Now, as you guys know, there really isn't a whole lot of commercially viable products mm -hmm. that use color e-ink. There's the Pocketbook Color, color Lux, Lux yeah. and the Ictaco Jetbook Color 1 and 2. And I think that there's a few other rogue ones around. Rebranded. Yeah. Uh, other, the, like Hanvon uses the Jetbook Color shell, but they rebranded Hanvon and kind of market as, as their own. But there are really just a couple major players in color e-ink. So what's the deal with color e -ink? Well, if you live in Western Europe, if you live in North America, chances are there's nothing marketed right. that actually have that. It's yeah. mainly Eastern Europe and Russia yeah. uh, that get it. Now, most color e-readers end up costing four to five hundred, six hundred dollars. I think the Jetbook Color Two came out at five ninety nine for uh, an e-reader, essentially. And it was fair, okay. So one of the the, the facets that had hindered it was not only the price but a lot of the components are fairly woeful yeah that was the thing with the jetbook slow. color one and two like super slow like four or five hundred megahertz processor yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like 128 mb of ram and they had all these like crazy linux programs yeah. that buckled under the weight it, it just couldn't handle the hardware yeah they preloaded so much stuff in it too remember like they had all these anatomy diagrams sat and they, study guides yeah, yeah. and they're book library had like 5,000 books in every language you can imagine and the thing was so bogged down out of the box you, you, you get it brand new you go through the setup you press like I don't know human human anatomy for uh, circulatory system the thing just takes forever to open and once it does there's no pinching and zooming I mean you try to navigate and it's just absolutely painfully slow yeah, so there's been two generations of color E8. There's yeah. been Triton uh, 1 and mm -hmm. then the most recent Triton 2. Uh, not really much has changed with each generation other than an additional layer and a diamond cut. The resolution has been relatively the same um, and we've not really seen a lot of innovation when it comes to E8. We've talked to a lot of e-reader companies and yeah. have asked them, you know, why haven't you adopted uh, color into your pipeline? We've talked to Kobo about this yeah. many times. And they said that they did some internal tests. They put a tablet and a color e-reader right next to each other. Mm. And every single person that was part of the focus study group basically said, why does it look all washed out? <laughs> yeah. Why doesn't it look like a tablet? Why does, you know, why does the color look poor? Right. And, and, and that's really that customer mentality of looking at it like an iPad Air or looking at like a Kobo Arc 10 and then looking at like a color e-reader you notice the colors look washed out now there's a lot of sort of technology on the horizon uh, that may hit the streets soon Amazon did purchase uh, Liquid Vista yes, from Samsung right. but they haven't really released it in any commercially viable products whether it's going to take some form on the new Kindle Fire line of tablets or whether it's going to add color uh, to their e-readers or maybe a mixture of both we don't no. So, Peter, overall, we've looked at color e ink yeah. from the very, very start, like we the have. first unveil at CES. I remember. And we've seen all the way up to the, the Pocketbook Touch Lux. Yes. E you know, e readers, e there's a lot of purists when it comes to e readers. People that just have e readers to read and that's it. But they want color e readers to look at their PDFs mm -hmm. or to look at their technical documents or for school. The, the whole tablet e-reader, you know, washed out yeah. aside, do, how viable do you think that color e-ink actually is? I, uh, I mean, it's been around what seems forever since e-readers really started hitting the major markets. And I, I don't know. I mean, it just seems that no one's really doing anything with it. Sure, they've had, uh, you know, like they, they did the whole diamond pixel thing instead of the vertical and horizontal lines for pixel uh, resolution. But... It, it still looks, I mean, I, I don't want to be too mean, but it looks terrible. I mean, it does. There's only about 4,000 colors displayed, which in essence, everything just looks, like you said, washed out. It, it looks like the, the contrast is super high and everything's fuzzy. And um, I, just, I just don't see it really going anywhere until somebody figures out what to really do with it. Because everyone who releases their new color e-reader, it's like, here's our new color e-reader. It's $500. Oh, what can I do? Oh, you can look at colored PDFs. It's like, 
what else? That's about it. Because they don't really do anything with the color, and since you can't really make an e-reader fast enough to play a game at 24, 30, 60 frames a second, because as your Angry Bird, you would throw it, it would go like this, and then it would stall, the page would flash, and he would already be ended, he would already end up at where the pigs are. So you can't make e-readers fluid enough, especially on a 10 inch e-reader like the Jetbook Color with an 800 megahertz processor and a full hard disk. So uh, I just, I don't know. I mean, it's, we've seen two generations of it. The Pocketbook Color Lux, I think has done it the best. And I only say that because it's 200 bucks. It's two or $300. Yeah. It's unlike the $600 price tag comes with the Jetbook. Um, and uh, the Color Lux is actually a uh, pretty good device. You can check out our YouTube channel. We have several reviews of it. It's an eight inch color ink uh, screen. It's not too bad. But other than that, I mean, it's it's remained roughly the same for a long time. So there's two segments that I feel that color eating could really shine. Uh, one of them is smartwatches. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. as the Pebble and the Sony smartwatch and uh, the Galaxy Gear have showed us that most of these phones using LCD or touchscreen. Uh, only lasts you a few days max yes. before you have to recharge it. And I think that this has really kind of hindered adoption. I've really stopped using my Pebble because I'm tired of charging it like every two days. I don't have my Sony either. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's the type of thing where who really wants to charge it every day? Yeah. Whereas with e ink Triton, this watch could really last you a few months as long as the, your Kindle does or your Nook does. And I think that the wearable tech could really shine with e ink Triton too. You have your e ink watch right now. And you never charge that. No. How great would that be if it was color? Yeah, there or, you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, having a, a smartwatch that was solar powered. Yeah. With the EA. Yeah, with that technology, it had a his has a solar um, panel around the bezel, uh, right inside the bezel around the screen and it actually charges on different spectrums of UV so even if it's cloudy out it'll actually still charge. Yeah. Totally. So I can see a lot of segments benefiting from color e-ink that haven't really been done before. Mm -hmm. Not just e-readers or tablets or something like that but the whole wearable uh, tech field uh, as well. What do you guys think? Do you think that color e-ink has a future? I really don't think so. Mm. I think that if the colors are too washed out, the average tablet could produce two to three or five million colors versus color e ink, which only does 4,096 colors. So, uh, by its very nature, it's never going to compete with tablets. Do you think it should compete in different verticals? Drop a comment and let us know for another roundtable discussion. My name is Michael. And this is Peter. Everybody take care. So you heard our take on the whole color e-ink thing. Where do you think it's going to go? You guys can leave a comment. Let us know what you guys think. Check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash goodyreader if you're watching this on another channel or you're watching this on another website. We have 900 plus videos, lots of contests, requests fulfilled all the time for you guys. And uh, enjoy your stay at goodyreader.com. Welcome if this is your first time.